Each and every person has inborn God-given powers. We can change our lives by learning to use these powers consciously and intentionally. The way we use or misuse these powers shapes our reality. Connect with your higher self. Connect with the divine. This is an open letter to Black America from Unity Ministers. We love you, and we embrace our responsibility to eradicate racism. It is our divine appointment to stand with you. To see you. To hear you. To listen. To be in conversation with you. To be with your anger without judgment. To know your sacred worth. To acknowledge my privilege to take responsibility to confront complacency to back my words with action palabras con acción to be accountable for effecting change in my community to support black owned businesses to be a bender of the arc of the moral universe that bends toward justice to demand the end of police brutality to use my voice and my vote to end systemic racism. To hold you and our country in prayer. To be a call to action. To, to be, be a, a voice, voice for, for justice. justice. To be a voice for unity. Take a moment in your seat to connect to the ground. Through the soles of your feet or your sit bones or whatever is touching, notice your connection to the ground. And with a long, slow breath through your nose, lengthen your spine. And now exhale. and feel yourself grounded again. As you sit, focus your attention on your breath and intentionally draw a slight smile to your lips. Allow your body to bask into this wonderful feeling right here, right now. With the next breath, know that you have everything you need. And as you exhale, allow your mind to send this feeling of completeness to everything and everyone around you. As you inhale, offer a simple phrase of kindness to yourself. And as you do that, relax even more and more into this breath. Now I want you to picture a person that you see often and offer them a simple gesture of kindness. 
say to them, may you live with ease today. And as others pop into your mind, repeat the phrase for each and every one of those people. May you live with ease today. Allow yourself to enjoy this practice of dropping kindness bombs on the other people in your life and continue doing that for the next several minutes with each inhalation and exhalation. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. If you run out of people, you can return to someone you have already visited and simply offer a little kindness. Now, with the next inhalation, turn inwardly to yourself and offer yourself more kindness. And from this sensation, of kindness. Allow yourself to feel as though you are free from every pain, suffering, disappointment. You are free. You are filled with joy and kindness. So as you free yourself from all situations, that may cause future pain and suffering. I want you to remember that you are powerful. You are creative and you can handle it. With the next breath, slowly open your eyes, feeling the love, joy, and happiness. Namaste.
Whoa, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, hello and welcome. I'm Reverend R. Ken Turner. This is Unity of Chicago South Spiritual Community Beyond Walls Spiritual Community. We are a non-virtual virtual community. What does that mean? It means that we practice the presence. We work with you to lift your consciousness using the internet, using <laughs> electronics, but we are real. <laughs> We're real people and each Sunday we do everything we can to bring you a live presentation that you can later see on YouTube. But when you see it on Sunday, in more cases than not, it is a live presentation. Wow. This is the second, um, second week, I, I believe, of, um, of Lent. Yeah, it's the second Sunday. That's what I was trying to get to. The second Sunday of Lent. And we have a few more Sundays to go. We have a few more weeks to go. And as I promised um, last week, the first Sunday, uh, I would get into the religion, rituals, the commercial aspect and the spiritual aspect of uh, this particular season. And that's something to look forward to uh, next week. Next week, right before the Divine Feminine. Wow, I love that when they come together. There was, um, there's what we call the affirmation of truth. And it's, sometimes it's a meditation and sometimes it's an affirming of the truth as we know it. Sometimes it's cosm cosmic, different, different approaches. Sometimes it's fundamental. It's breaking it down so you can walk with it during the course of a week. And in most cases, there's a period to a preparation or a period within it where we are supposed to just be still. And I want to just spend a moment on the importance of being still. The importance of being still, you know? There is a opportunity to connect when we come into a calmness and allow our ego self to relax and allow our divine self to come forth. So in your meditation, in your practice, whatever it is you do, remember the importance of calmness. And in the seven steps of creation, it's said that that seventh day is so important, it's the day of rest. And, 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 and what we're saying here is that it's so important to remember to maintain, to find, to go into a moment, at least, of calmness to allow the spiritual work that you're doing to come forth. So much for that. <laughs> Again, thanks for being here today. I also want to remind you of this important, important fact, and that's the fact that there is an infinite source available to everyone. It's there for each who seek it, no matter their race, their gender, or their religion. You can believe what you may, but you should know that the source of the universe is also the source of each of us. Therefore, the principle supporting the stars is the principle supporting and available to each of us. As I go forth and declare this statement in the first person, understand that I am declaring it for all. I am open and receptive to this divine living principle. Mother, Father, God, I am grateful. This is my declaration. This is my truth. And as I accept it, so it becomes. And all is well and well indeed. Today's poem. When you feel like you're not enough, and the road ahead seems way too tough. Turn straight to God, he'll give you strength to go the distance no matter what the length. When at first you think you just can't do it and before you start, you just want to quit, know that God is right there with you and with his guidance, you'll know 
When you start to think the climb you can't make, ask God for the power to do what it takes. With God, you can do it by Deborah Ann. Today, I want to uh, invite you on a journey. I want to invite you on a journey with me beyond the scenes. Right, you heard it correctly, beyond the scenes. Now you might ask, where is this beyond? Where is it located? And that's a fair question. When you are invited on a journey to an unfamiliar destination somewhere with anyone. But because you are here at this moment right now with me, in this sacred virtual space, I believe you are capable of making this journey beyond. I want you to know that within each human, no, human, no matter the belief system that they practice or the lack thereof of belief system, there is the activity of life energy moving. This moving is demonstrated by the flow of the blood and other life-sustaining fluids through each life on the planet. Now, without the use of scientific equipment or medical instruments or a severe laceration, the flow is invisible. But this invisibility is taking place every moment of life unseen. Now, one of the major organs behind this flow of life within each life is the heart. Powering this life flow is electricity. Now, 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 although this process is beyond the vision of the naked eye, it is not the beyond journey that I talked to you about a little earlier. See, this journey beyond our inner invisible life flow is the exploration of invisible source behind the invisible electric life flow, behind the scenes. Within the invisible source beyond the flow of life is the strength to move the flow. Behind the scenes, of all that's going on that we can't see is the strength to move all that that we cannot see. Mm. In the revealing word, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore defines strength as the energy of God originating in spirit but manifesting through the thought and the word. As Reverend Bobby shared with us in his introduction of the spiritual principle of strength, all strength comes from God. Now, we can play that out in various scenes. You see, building muscle strength comes from God. Overcoming challenges comes from God. Standing for right in the face of wrong comes from God. The strength to speak, speak strength to power. These are just a few of the dying strength, the divine strength, the God strength in expression. This is our destination. Behind the scenes of expression to the source, behind the invisible life flow to the, what did Charles Fillmore calls, the energy of God originating in, in spirit expressing in our human experience. Now, while the body can be moved to amazing achievements, amazing things we can do with our bodies. Have you seen some of the folks that have built their bodies up to be just one big mass of muscle? Or people that have toned themselves down to show just muscle, they're so sculptured. The body can do amazing things. It, it can be trained to lift weights beyond itself. But that's all done with this 
energy of God. And knowing that, all that we see, the power that we see in the body, understand that the mind has even greater potential. As it learns to align itself with this unseen divine flow. Now you may have heard the axiom, free your mind and the rest will follow. Actually it was a lyric of a fairly popular song from back in the day as they say. Well the free your mind and the rest will follow includes your body, your success, your freedom, your potentiality. You see, freeing the mind allows it to align with your own inner God energy that emanates, that comes from the source strength of the universe. Let's, let's spend one minute there. Freeing your mind, taking your ego, setting it aside, freeing your mind, not worrying about the troubles and, and all the pains and all that that you have, freeing your mind just for a moment allows it to connect with the source strength that comes from the universe, beyond what's inside of you, beyond the cells, beyond the heart, beyond the flow of life in you. It allows you to go beyond the scene and connect with the strength of the universe. In the Pragmatic mystic Mysticism lecture, in this series, the mystic Mildred Mann reminds us that fear is the foundation of all failure. I want to say this again, what she said, now don't, don't beat up on Reverend R. Kim for this. I happen to buy into it and I've been working with it, but she says fear is the foundation of all failure. So anything in your life that you haven't achieved that you want to achieve, she says, look at the fear that stopped you from doing it. Huh. Wow. Who knew? All of us in a sense. In Luke 12, 32, the scripture reminds us to do what? To fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear, the foundation for all failure, and we're being told to fear not. Why? Because it's the father's good pleasure, your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now I want you to understand that trust is required to release oneself from fear. I want to say that one more time. Trust is required to release oneself from fear. Trust that it is the Father's good pleasure to give the kingdom. Not the Father's good pleasure to hold it back from you. Not the Father's good pleasure to make you jump through hoops for it. But it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is the invisible essence of reality. A consciousness connected with divine ideas. This is the kingdom. These divine ideas that is within and each within each within each that means you each means you it means me sometimes we forget don't we that there's this kingdom within us already that it has already been given waiting to be expressed into our experience you said man rev you make that sound so easy i want some of that give me some of that i got trust well, well, I want you to hold for a minute. Just for a second, just slow down, puppy. All right. See, there is something we have to do. See, our work is to develop trust in the reality of this invisible essence and of our natural connection with divine ideas. Hold it, hold it, hold it. What are you saying? What are you saying? I, I need to do what? You have to believe that it exists. You have to believe that it's for you, no matter what's going on in your life. That's hard. Ha! Huh, you don't know how hard it is. <laughs> I'll show you hard. Look at my life. You're right, it's hard. But it's doable. 
Our work is to develop trust in the reality of this invisible essence and of our natural connection with divine ideas. So our work is to develop a knowing that the kingdom has already been given to each of us. Uh-oh. I don't go out and get it. I got a dope. You got it already. We all have it already. Boy, that'll preach. We have it already. So we have to work with the understanding. I already have it. God is not against me. And I am working to developing my knowingness that it's already there. I, I'm not trying to make it there. I'm not trying to put it there. I'm not trying to grab it from the outside and stick it in me. I am saying to myself, it's already there. And I got to work hard to express it in my experience. But when we develop this consciousness, we begin to the loosening of the and open an inner path for the God energy to flow into that experience of ours, that life experience. What do we say? When we start the trust process, we release the fear. When we start the trust process, we release the fear. We began to release. It's not going to go away automatically. You're going to get another challenge. Something else is going to come up. And you have to keep going back. You have to keep going back because you have the strength of the universe flowing behind your life energy. Understand that. You have the strength of the universe, the universe, the stars, the planets, the black matter. You have all of that energy behind the life force of the energy flowing in you. You are such a powerful, dynamic, vessel. And as this strength flows forth in your life, it brings with it huh, achievement. It brings with it achievement. What are we saying? As it comes into your life, as it moves into your life, it brings with it Achievement. Things happen in a positive way for you as it flows into your life. That's the achievement. And the achievement is what is going to open the door for external success to express in our lives. So there's an inner achievement that comes through, yes, and begins to express in the external in our life experience. The universe feeds the inner life the inner life expressed in outer experience. Wow. Hello? <laughs> you know, if we were in the room together today, I probably would say, do you hear me? Is anybody listening right about now? In Matthew 5, 5, Scripture reminds us that blessed are the meek, for they should inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they should inherit the earth. While this may seem to contradict the idea of strength, it does not. In fact, it is a road map, a road map for conscious connection with source strength. How does that work, Ralph? See, it's when we relinquish the blind intellectual following of our will, of our ego, and instead, 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 allow divine will to guide us that our own inner strength comes forth. The strength that is required to achieve, to succeed, to overcome, to bring forth the life we want when we do this, when we do this, when we allow ourselves to, def to follow that divine will, that strength is released. Now, meekness is on display when we decide to what? React to negative stimuli, as uh, Charles Fillmore says, negative stimuli and disappointment 
not with revenge, not with hate, not with anger, but with the divine strength within us, supported by wisdom, love. Wisdom, love. Working together, wisdom, love. And this allows us to move into that achievement phase where we find the success and we're able to do the overcoming of the negative situation. See, in this spiritual meekness, we find the strength to forgive or to let go. And that leads to a success that is inherent in the process. What are you saying to me, Reverend? What are you saying to me? Because as we come to forgive and as we come to release, there is a power within that process that brings forth success and achievement in our lives. Sometimes we want to not forgive and go forward. <laughs> Well, when you don't forgive, you anchor yourself to whatever that was, and you're trying to go forward, and you can understand how it's hard to go forward when an anchor is locked in to something else and tied around you. So it's be able to forgive and then let go, too. Yeah, that was a bad deal. That was a rough deal. I made so many mistakes. I got to let go of it because I'm anchored to it, and I'm trying to go forward, and it won't work. In fact, I find myself repeating the same stuff because I haven't moved past it. I'm anchored. I can't go nowhere. <laughs> See, it's through the, 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 our connection to divine strength that is the assurance for our success. It is through our connection to divine strength that is the assurance for our success. Remember we said we have to build that, build that trust up. Remember we said we have to believe. Remember we said we have to have faith. Well, now we, we need to add that we are already connected to this divine strength. It's part of the step that we need to walk on as we build up this connection. That It's already there. And it's because it's there that I can succeed. What did our poem say? I ask God. And as we learn to accept this, as we learn to accept this, what are we accepting again? We're already connected to divine strength and that assures our success. And the more that we accept this, the more that we accept this, the more expresses in our outer experience. Hmm? So it's about accept. Say, I, I can't accept it. It's so hard. You don't know what I've been through. You're right, I don't. You're absolutely right. I don't. And guess what? Don't want to. Say, that's very cold. New thought, new thought, folks, that's, yeah, that's how y'all are. Y'all don't care about humanity. Y'all don't care about my pain. I want to take a minute to kind of divert right now. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. But we yes. found by going through the process ourselves that first, the first healing has to be us. And the first healing has to be you. That's how it works. You see, when I'm rich, I can give to others. But when I'm not rich and my thought is giving to others, I'm missing the mark on me. That's error thinking. That's weakness. In the face of all the strength available to us, that is weakness, that is that ego, that is our intellectual will taking us to a direction that is devastating. I want to go back to Mildred Mann. She suggests that our initial step to claim ourselves is to find the peace. Remember I talked about that earlier. Finding the peace. Finding the peace. So even in your practice, if you haven't calmed yourself down before you go into your practice, make sure there's a calm point somewhere in that practice or at the end of that practice to allow all that you've been working for us to come forth. You see, sometimes we just have to slow down to speed up. 
Next, we should release fear into the calmness that we created. We need to work on releasing the fear into the calmness we created. Do you see what's happening here? First, you find this peace, and then you start working with the peace, and you release fear into the peace. And then finally, we want to trust. Listen to me well, and I'm listening to me when I say this. You see, we all need to be reminded. We all need to be reminded of the salvation that's available to each and every one of us. But we need to trust the already presence of the needed strength to achieve. Well, 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 run that past me again. It's already in place. You, you, you can't make God do this. <laughs> God already done this. Uh-oh. So if God already done this, where's it at? So I can get me some. And God located it in you. So you go in you to get you some. But you're not trying to get anything. You're trying to release what's already there. Release the strength that's already there. Because you're going behind the scene of everything else. Behind the scene of being strong. Behind the, behind the scene of knowing that life is flowing through you. Behind the scene to the universal strength of all life. And bringing your awareness up so that you can connect to it. Today's poet remind us. She reminded us. When, listen to me now. When, because it's going to happen. Mean when it's going to happen. When you start to think that the climb you can't make, ask God for the power to do what it takes. All strength comes from God and has already been bestowed within each of us as an aspect of the kingdom of God. It is through the developing faith and trust that we move beyond the blind and binding chains of fear, opening up a path for divine strength to flow into our life experience and support our quest for success, whatever it is, whatever you want. It doesn't know the difference. Well, you want money and you want health and you want joy. It doesn't know. It just says you want to be successful. You want to have this. My job is to work with you to support you to get it. We, want, we have to know the spiritual. We're talking about spiritual meekness. is not weakness. It, it is a conscious choice to strive to find and follow divine guidance for our life. A conscious choice. Now as we work to forgive and let go, as we are guided to do in our spiritual practice, remember now this spiritual practice is not just to make you feel good, it has a purpose. I need to learn to forgive and I need to let go. We move ourselves beyond this inner strength that's doing the pumping of the blood and all the fl uh, uh, fluids. We move beyond that into the presence of the source of all there is. Oh my. Oh my. Do, do you see the pattern? We work to release the strength that's already there. We don't work to get stronger. That, 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 that we do on a physical level, but on a spiritual level, we're releasing the the strength of the strength. And that's what we're working to do. And today, uh, after we close, there's a little spe special message I'd like you to stay tuned for. And right now, I want to close with this statement. Hmm. I'm going to say it once, and then I'll give you an opportunity to say it with me if you'd like. I am one with Source right now. Source is expressing as me right now. For those of you that would like to join in, let's say it one time together. 
I am one with source right now. Source is expressing as me right now. Thank you so much for joining us today. And until next time, blessings and bliss and namaste. And remember, I'd ask you to stay tuned for a brief message. Thank you.